Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to be talking about how to use supporter management and segmenting your donors to improve your donor stewardship and your relationships with your donors. My name is Jacqueline. I'm a customer success champion here at GiveGab. And over the last four years, I've also been involved in um, creating and organizing fundraising events for nonprofits. I'm also joined today by Jennifer Spencer, who's another customer success champion here at GiveGab. Jumping right in, donor segmentation is the process of organizing your supporter information in a way that allows you to better understand and interact with your donors. Of course, each donor is unique. However, we'll talk about some ways to group your supporters that will help you be more familiar with who your donors are, and that'll help you initiate and maintain those relationships. By gathering and sorting data such as donation history, years of participation, and event attendance, you can personalize your interactions with your donors. So by being able to sort that data about your donors, you're going to be able to communicate more effectively. Uh, you'll be able to promote content that will interest them because the more that you know about the kinds of causes and events that they're interested in, the better that you'll be able to target those donors with the content that you're sending out to them. And you'll be able to build stronger personal relationships with them, again, because you have more information about them and you know what they're interested in and what's going to reach them more effectively. Hi, this is Jennifer Spencer. Uh, again, as Jackie introduced me, I'm also a member of the customer success team here. In uh, my previous position, I worked as an executive director for an animal shelter for seven years. So I know exactly how small nonprofits work and different challenges that they have. So uh, this presentation really speaks to me in many different ways also. So there are many different benefits of segmenting your donors. What you wanna do is um, by doing this, it helps you better understand your supporters, such as you can segment how long have they been supporting your organization? Do they have any specific causes that they're interested in? Maybe your nonprofit has, is grouped up into different, um, different places that you support or different causes that you, your organization deals with. And how do they donate their time? Do they actually volunteer? Do they do different things to help your, your nonprofit? Do they donate money? Uh, maybe some items. Uh, maybe if you work for like a homeless shelter or an animal shelter, something like that, where you need blankets, towels, pillows, things like that donated, you wanna be sure that you group them into a certain place also, as well as different sponsorships. Do they help you sponsor 5Ks or galas or different, thing like, different things like that? Are they large sponsors, maybe small individual sponsors or businesses? So there's really good ways to segment those different groups. And also by segmenting, it allows you to personalize your communications as well as your stewardship plan. So you can distinguish between larger donors, major donors and smaller donors, as well as repeat donors and of course, new donors that you might get through any new campaign or event that you have. So that way you can tailor your communications appropriately. And also by doing this, you can easily re-engage your supporters from year to year and event to, invade, to event, excuse me. In turn, this leads to happier supporters as well as higher donor retention, which is always what we should be focusing on. Now, moving on to how nonprofits use segmenting, um, the first thing, the first step in this process would be to decide what information your organization needs and wants to know about its supporters. And we have a few examples here of the kinds of information that you might want to collect and start thinking about. For example, giving level. So taking a look at the amounts that, they, that these donors have given and then segmenting them in terms of are they a lower capacity donor who gives um, you know the smaller amounts throughout the year maybe they're a repeat donor even if they've been one of the more lower capacity donors uh, then you have maybe medium level donors or larger donors volunteer history so what kinds of volunteer opportunities they've participated in other ways that they've helped your organization out perhaps Participation in past events, this is a very important one because 
the, what I find to be really useful about having this information is that it really does give you some insight into what kinds of um, what kinds of causes and and events that that they're really interested in, just like we were talking about in that intro. Um, and if you know that someone has attended the same type of event in the past, then you're gonna then be able to identify that person as someone who you want to let them know when a similar event is coming up in the future. Years involved, so you'll, you're gonna pr probably want to know if each donor is new to your organization or if they've been giving for you know a number of years and any other key information you want to know. So that could include demographic information, uh, where people live, uh, the ages of your donors, anything like that that you determine to be important that you would like to be able to gather and, and record for yourself. You also can collect your supporter information through providing custom surveys, registration forms, and other tools. So when you have these different events throughout the year, you can have those folks that register or donate write their addresses and emails on any registration form that you have, or if they're donating something, try and capture that also at the same time at that event. Maybe you're having a gala coming up or a silent auction. As folks come into your door, you can actually just have them fill out a sign-in sheet, collect their physical and email addresses of those who attend so that you can send out future correspondence. And then whenever you send out your various newsletters or different appeals throughout the year that go out in, in the actual mail with the Postal Service, be sure to include a donation form which captures addresses and emails that way too. So whenever someone donates at your place of business or sends something, maybe they ship something to your nonprofit, be sure to always get their supporter information. Thank them in person if possible if they're at your place of business, as well as sending them a nice thank you note in the mail. That's just one more way of stewardship and how you can retain those donors for future different events or, or just letting them know what's going on with your organization. So when you have all this information, you wanna keep an organized internal record of all those donations and any ways individual supporters have been involved with your organization. So it is important to be quite organized and make sure that you have all, as much information as you possibly can capture for these individuals. Absolutely. Now moving on to how to identify which of those relationships to prioritize. You're going to want to take note of giving level and overall participation. So when we're listing out those types of things that we want to know about our donors, we're going to then maybe choose to emphasize those major donors or repeat donors. Uh, or perhaps you want to focus on your new donors, make sure that they're feeling welcomed in your organization. Uh, top fundraisers and volunteers are another, uh, another group that organizations might choose to focus on. And once you've decided the groups of supporters that you're going to prioritize, you're going to develop your stewardship plan for each of those relationships. And some things that are just super important for all of your relationships and stewardship, you're going to always want to send a thank you to each donor within 24 to 48 hours of a donation so that they always have that immediate recognition and thank you add those donors to your database so that you have that information that you collected about them saved somewhere safe. And send them your weekly and monthly newsletters, email blasts, capital campaigns, annual appeals, any other communications that go out regularly uh, to make sure that, that your donors are staying up to date and engaged with what's going on. For very large donors or sponsors, you might consider doing a press release or inviting local media to your organization to thank them. And you're always going to want to get permission, of course, anytime that you do a more public acknowledgement, but that can be a really special way to recognize major donors as well and um, you know, enhance your stewardship with them and increase that relationship. So yes, absolutely. Um, the information on the previous slide really does help ex to execute your stewardship plan to ensure that all your donors receive that proper recognition and that they're benefiting from their relationship with you. 
So even you also, I'm sure you have different either board members or supporters who have been with your organization for many, many, many years, that you can do something special just for them, um, whether you do some type of special recognition plaque, um, maybe a volunteer picnic or something like that every year. So there are ways to just recognize certain individuals too, um, just to make them feel more special. Here's an example of how you might segment uh, a group of 100 donors into smaller groups. So you have uh, that larger section all the way on the left there that's smaller donors. They've given a dollar up to $99. And they're obviously going to receive your thank you email like we talked about. You want to get that immediate thank you message out there. Um, and once you move up to the next couple of levels there, you see that the personalization becomes a little bit more involved. So we have a personal letter that we're going to send out to those donors in the 100 to 499 range. Um, that could be a handwritten letter. Um, make sure that it's personalized in some way. And then once you get up to your larger donors, um, starting to make some, some more public types of acknowledgments. And an online acknowledgment is a great way to recognize specific donors or your major donors um, because it's going to be seen by everybody who's visiting your social media pages or your website and uh, that those donors are going to really feel appreciated that you took the time to to recognize them in that sort of a way and once you move on to to a more public acknowledgement again you'll want to make sure that you have permission to do that but it really is a, a a way to to show your appreciation and um, can be very special for those donors. And this example is, uh, you know, it's very simple. It's really um, just involves some quick calculations, and you can decide uh, whatever is whatever you feel is appropriate. Um, you don't obviously need to follow this uh, kind of segmentation exactly, but any kind of um, system that you already have within your organization, you could use something like this to determine what's appropriate for each level of, of giving or your um, groups of donors that you've identified that you want to that you want to make sure that you're recognizing. Yes, um, so various ways of segmenting and stewardship and how these two really are one and of the same as far as um, getting them grouped a certain way and then sending out particular correspondences to them. So by segmenting donors into the various groups, you have the opportunity to send out specific communications to each group easily. So if you have an event coming up that you only want one particular group to be invited to, then you already have that uh, group specifically. So maybe you only have uh, an appeal campaign coming up or a capital campaign that you only want to send communications to your large donors or some sponsors, then you'll already have them grouped. And maybe some of your large donors, they should receive more thank yous more often, or you know, like I said earlier, some more specialized um, recognition. You can create more detailed descriptions of upcoming campaigns or any exciting news on the horizon that you find that's coming up, maybe even in a five to 10 year plan that you could communicate out to them as well. But it's also your opportunity to get creative. So if you have a bunch of really awesome volunteers or maybe you have some school children that you work with throughout various years with volunteering, invite them to a pizza party or celebrate a senior dog that was adopted recently if you're an animal shelter. Really anything that you want to do to recognize folks and just really make it fun because as you're your donors and your supporters have fun with your organization and different communications that you put out. It makes your organization more fun too. It just, it's a really cool way to be more creative and just really have a good time with it. But really the point is stewardship should always be in the top of your mind for your nonprofit because by taking care of your supporters, providing recognition, giving support to them as well, they in turn obviously help you and your organization. So we do have some better segmenting with different online tools. 
We have uh, email and other forms of online messaging. So aside from sending out newsletters and different communications in the mail, um, direct mail that can go out, you also should be doing some types of email blasts. So I'm sure, you know, as you capture those different emails from different events and campaigns, you can just add them to different groups right in your um, email uh, addresses that you have. And you can send out different um, information to them that way. So if you have like a campaign coming up or maybe you just want to recognize a certain individual but you want one particular group to know that, you can send them an email just those different groups that you've already um, put together to let them know what's going on. And there's also different spreadsheets, other word processing apps that can help organize your data and store contact information and important information and history. And we actually here at GiveGab on our platform, we do offer a number of these features on our Boost plan to assist with segmentation. And we'll go over some of this a little bit later where we have enhanced supporter profiles. You can add custom properties and those would be like if you have you want to segment them into board members or volunteers, or if they are sponsors, um, large donors, small donors. And then you also can create custom tags that are individual tags for each individual person. And we'll get into that a little bit later too, as well as custom notes for each individual donor or supporter. And Jackie's going to talk about the enhanced supporter profiles. Yeah, so this is what you're going to see if you're on the Boost plan and you look up one of your donors on the GiveGab site. Uh, you get access to their full donation history, including which campaigns they've donated to and if they have any recurring donations. So you can see that. Um, you can also see if any of those donations were offline or online. Um, as well as, of course, the amounts and, and the date that they made that donation. Your volunteer history, so you'll see what volunteer opportunities that they have logged hours for, um, as well as their fundraising history. So if they have been a fundraiser for any of your campaigns or events and how much they raised. And Jennifer, do you want to talk a little bit about the tags and custom properties? Yes. Yes, so on that same uh, plan, we do offer with the, with the enhanced supporter profile page, you can create custom tags for individual supporters that you have on there. So in this instance, it's a screenshot of an example where we have created tags for different giving day donors, uh, if they were a volunteer in a particular year, if they were a Giving Tuesday donor, if they adopted a pet, if they, they have received mailers, um, even when their birthday is. So again, you can create tags and then you can search for them later on in order to send out, export a CSV first, and then you can um, sort that spreadsheet as you need to and then send out any, uh, either an email communication or you can send them direct mail from that spreadsheet. So again, it's just one more way to segment and create different groups for those particular supporters that you already have on GiveGab. And the next page is talking about custom properties. So when you import um, different supporters that you may have already for your organization, like you have your own spreadsheet or your own database of that, you can actually import a CSV into our platform if you are on the Boost plan. And in that way, you can create custom properties directly that are on your spreadsheet. So first, you would want to make sure that you have the first name, last name, email address on your spreadsheet. And then you can create any other custom properties. Like this particular screenshot is showing, you can add the birth date, um, when they're different, um, if they have any particular types of communications that they like to receive. Maybe they don't like to receive any emails or they, they really only want your once a year uh, annual appeal that comes out in let's say October or November. You can make that a note in here and a custom property so that way they're, they're grouped so they won't receive any communication. So really the sky's the limit on this too of how you want to group them. Um, so that way it's directly here on GiveGab also. So later on you can search for them and sort them in that the same way as custom tags. 
Awesome. And the notes section is really the the place to write down anything that you just haven't had another place to to include. So there's so many different options, many different things that you can do with this. Um, just as a few examples, you can use it to keep track of your supporters participation, um, maybe specific things uh, that they did to help your organization, such as if they adopted a pet, um, that would be a great use of the notes section. Or um, you can use it to record when you send out your communication. So um, in the example here, um, this user recorded that they sent a handwritten note on May 8th. So then you have that record of, of the last time a communication was sent out. Or you could write a longer detailed description of your supporters' interests, maybe their preferences for th if they want to receive emails or not, if they um, are interested in certain activities that your organization has participated in, um, different events that they enjoyed. And that way you can then acknowledge these details um, when you interact with them. So if you have, um, you know, the name of their dog that they adopted in the notes, then you can, next time you send out a note to them, ask how Mr. Pickles is doing. Um, those little personal touches really go a long way. And it's, uh, it's really simple to, to do once you have a place to, to, um, to uh, save this information, you can really use it to, in so many ways. Yes, and that actually ties into our next slide here where we're segmenting for personal asks. So just like Jackie just mentioned, if you know the name of an animal uh, someone adopted even like five years ago or something like that, you can just send them something personalized um, with that information. So when we showed the donation history, um, you can categorize supporters as non-donors, non excuse me, lower capacity, middle, or major donors. And then you can tailor your communications to suggest an appropriate giving level. So by breaking down your communication by segment, you can create a more engaging content that really speaks to your target audience as opposed to always messaging all of your supporters about every opportunity. Just like if you're sending out communications to volunteers, you probably would word it a little differently about the opportunity than if you were sending it out to your board members or an advisory board or even some of your very large sponsorships. And the same thing, you know, back and forth. So you just want to make sure your communication matches with the segment that you're sending out the information to. Of course, once you've segmented your donors, it really becomes so much easier to send out these customized messages to each of those different groups that you segmented. So you can use this information to welcome new supporters. So you have that group of new supporters who have been involved with your, your organization maybe less than a year or um, however you choose to define that. Um, you have that, that contact information for that group right there available to you. You can immediately use it to send out a welcome message. Um, identify supporters' interests by the events they've attended or which campaigns and causes they tend to donate to. So if you have, like we've mentioned, an event coming up that, um, you know, if um, you've identified that they've participated in the same event for multiple years, uh, like they've like uh, participated in your walkathon, for example, every year since you've been having that event, if you have a, a, a new walkathon or a 5K coming up, you're going to want to make sure that that donor um, is on that list of communications because you know that they they're likely to be interested in that. Adding extra layers of recognition for repeat and major donors, so sending out those personalized gifts or messages, um, and taking the time to ensure that those major donors and repeat donors are are feeling appreciated and each gift that they're making is is important to you um, being sure that you're showing as specifically as possible what what it is that their gift is helping you to do in your organization personalized ask methods of communication and stewardship plans based on donor segment so this is really the bottom line here you want to Make sure that you're, you're using those segments that you've created 
to personalize your asks, personalize your communications, and it's going to just transform your, your stewardship for the better. Absolutely. And here's an example of a donation history screenshot from GiveGab. Um, this is actually myself, but these are examples. Um, and it shows you that my donation history is like $20 back in May of, of this year, um, $20 again in February of this year. So when sending out correspondence to someone that has a smaller donation history, you don't want to send something out that the minimum ask is, let's say, $500 or $1,000. Or you wouldn't want to send out communications that is for um, maybe a large event that has a very high uh, ticket value, per se. Um, so you just want to be sure, again, that you're, you're sending out the right communications. Uh, let's say that I had a volunteer history on here, then you would want to send out different volunteer opportunities. Even if I've only done one thing, you still want to try and, and get them more involved by sending out more communications for volunteering specifically. But you can also see on this page, we have the different custom properties on here. So if I had um, any of this information as far as that you would import, then you would, you would, it would show on here um, different things that I would have, like when my birthday was. Uh, if I'm a dog owner, what's my dog's name? So again, sending out something personalized to me um, would be available to you. And the other example that we have right here, we can see that uh, this donor has some varied donation history. We can see she's made a few larger gifts to a giving day and also a couple of events in there. She's made a $5,000 gift, whereas some of her other donations are, are smaller, $10, $25. Um, but this would be an example of someone who we want to maybe focus on when, um, when we see that she's given a larger gift to a certain event or a certain cause. Um, we can then identify that as something that in the future we're going to then um, make sure that she is aware and involved when those kinds of events are coming up. Um, because we know that that's, um, that those are events and causes that she really cares about. Um, she has some fundraising history. We can see that she's, she's fundraised quite a bit for a couple of those events. And those are the same events that she's also attended for multiple years in a row. So same idea. Um, when that, if that's an annual event, when that event is coming up, we're going to want to make sure that we're letting Katrina know that it's coming up. Um, make sure that we're sending out an appropriate ask and based on uh, you know, her giving level from past years and her um, fundraising history shows us that she might be interested in fundraising again this year. Awesome. Yeah, she has a lot of interesting things on there, which you'll find a lot of different donors or supporters or board members, they're going to have multiple things. So they could be part of multiple groups. And that's definitely okay. That, that's actually good that they would receive different communications for different things. So our next example here is an example of the various custom properties where you can record the information you want to know about your donors, and then you can use those details again to personalize your communications. So let's say you want to send out an email or um, an ask in the mail for those who have adopted dogs, or maybe those who have been placed in, um, in homes over the last um, a year or six months. You can group them that way and then send out communication just directly to them. And even you can use this information to download a CSV and create a mail merge where you can make it even more customized. So as I stated earlier in the presentation, I managed a, a very small animal shelter in rural Pennsylvania. So really it was just me who handled all of the communications. So whether it was the public relations, um, sending out emails, doing different annual appeals, capital campaigns, events, that pretty much was me and a very small group of volunteers and board members. So what do you do in order to even start this type of process as far as segmenting your donors? You probably wanna start small. It's always better to start small than take off too much than you can chew. So if you're like me and you only had maybe an hour or two a week to even start on segmenting, 
what you could start with is just grouping simple, simple things. So your volunteers, your board members, large donors, and small donors. That way you at least have some place to start because I guarantee all of the nonprofits who are listening today and who will listen later after it's being recorded will definitely have those individuals who are in these particular uh, segments. So in these particular ones, you just make sure that each grouping receives email communication or um, regular mail and that they're kept up to speed with any campaigns, events, or anything fun and exciting that's going on with your organization. And remember, always be pre be creative and get this, get everyone excited. And we also have a lot of really cool best practices as far as donor segmentation that really does work. You can create robust constituents. So sending emails to those that are grouped by past donations, walkathons, those who have donated to your annual appeal, and create a consistent contingency plan. You can also use those giving histories for future appeals. So again, pay attention to their donation amounts. Don't ask them for large amounts if they generally donate $10 to $20. However, this can change when you're doing your annual appeal, which is usually um, a donor's last time of the year to get a tax receipt, a tax deductible receipt. So sometimes during those times, they will donate a larger amount. So maybe for your annual appeal, you actually would send communication out, even if it has a large ask to everyone on your supporter list. You also want to pay attention to different job titles that you collect. So such as if they're a CEO, a CFO, an executive director, or part of an administration for a large organization, uh, maybe a hospital or um, you know, like a sponsor organization that you have, either they themselves might be able to donate larger amounts or they probably have access to definitely their administration team, but maybe others in their organization or even a team of people in the organization who might be able to become a large sponsor for your organization. So if you have a golf tournament coming up, maybe next May, um, keep those people in mind that they might be able to be sponsors and be make sure you send out correspondence sooner than later when you're planning events like that. So especially at 5k, a gala, a golf tournament, you want to really send out like save the dates and sponsorship material about six to nine months before the event itself. Uh, number four, know how your donors like to receive communication. So again, if you have someone who doesn't even want to receive communication, make sure you note that because, you know, folks don't want to be receiving tons of things if they don't only want to see for only your annual appeal. So create a tag for those who prefer to receive mailers, which would be something um, that they get like in their mailbox. Their, your annual appeal that goes out or any capital campaign appeals that go out, newsletters and email blasts. And again, pay attention to those who don't want to receive certain communication. Maybe they just don't want your emails all the time because it clogs up the, their email account. And also make sure your, your organization has a social media presence. Pay attention to that. Do some of your supporters have fantastic social media presence? You might have someone on your volunteer database who really has a very large amount of people who follow their Facebook page or their Twitter account or Instagram. So use that to your advantage when it comes time for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, which is where they can create their own fundraising page to raise funds on behalf of your organization. And also just to get the word out of different things that are happening within your organization. So if you have something fun coming up, an event, uh, a campaign, or you just want to congratulate someone, or you're really happy about something that's going on, engage those supporters who have that really large presence on social media, because the more they share out information to their friends, family, their um, different people who like their page, you never know. Some of those might in turn become either supporters of your organization or donors themselves. Just to summarize a little bit why segmenting matters, skillful supporter management enhances donor nonprofit relationships. That's really what we've been getting at with this entire 
webinar today, um, really want to drive it home that when you manage your supporters in an appropriate way, it is going to enhance your relationship with those supporters. So that, again, that's a two-way street. It's, um, you know, you're helping your donors feel appreciated, feel recognized, feel that they're getting something important out of their relationship with you. They're seeing what their gifts have helped you accomplish. And you're also, um, you know, facilitating more engagement, more donations. Um, you're benefiting from that relationship, of course. And personalized recognition and attention increases donor retention and engagement. So essentially, um, the more personalized that you can make your recognition and the more attention that you can give to those donor segments, the more that that's going to encourage them to stay with your organization throughout the years and to engage more in those different events um, that you're promoting and continue to make their donations. Also, again, online tools really do make it so easy for you to have all the information that you need just at your fingertips. It's really easy for you to ac access it anytime that you need. Um, having your donors contact information and their preferences for how they want to be, how they want to receive those communications, just like Jennifer was saying. And segmenting also allows you to encourage that future support by creating realistic asks for each of those groups of supporters. So once again, just having that opportunity to, and that knowledge of uh, the, the giving level that someone's at, what they're interested in, and using that to, to personalize your communication with them and, um, you know, you know, come up with an ask that's, that's appropriate and realistic for that specific donor. Perfect. Thanks, Jackie. That does reach the conclusion of our presentation. And we will reach out now to anyone who has any questions. If you just want to chat in, we can answer any questions that you might have. And of course, if a question comes to you later on, you can always chat in to us on GiveGab using the blue chat bubble or our email address, customersuccess at givegab.com. We'll respond to you there as well. Oh, I do see we do have one question that's come in. The question is what to do if you have a larger organization and you, but just again, you're only one person. What I would probably do is try to reach out to see if you have any volunteers in your um, organization who might want to help you with that. I know when I worked at the animal shelter, I had a few people who would like to come in and help me just stuff mailers and things, but they were also good with the computer. So they might be able to help you um, with different databases and, and getting set up like that. Okay, well, we're gonna close out then. Um, we really thank you so much for participating and listening to our presentation. And again, if you have any questions while you're on GiveGab, you know you can always reach us, reach out to us with the blue chat bubble, or you can email us at customersuccess at givegab.com. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day.